Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Dear fellow members of the body of Christ, why am I such a misfit? I am not just a knit wit. You can't fire me, I quit. I'll never fit in. Hermie the Elf sang this song in the 1964 TV special Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. You see, Hermie the Elf was one of Santa's elves, and so his job, his life's calling, was to build toys for Santa to deliver to children. The only problem was he didn't want to. He wasn't good at it. It wasn't in his wheelhouse. It didn't fit with his abilities. Do you remember what Hermie wanted to be? He, instead of building toys for Santa, he wanted to be a dentist. He was far more interested in clean and straight teeth than he was in building G.I. Joes. And so he got fired for being a misfit. Find a YouTube clip of Hermie the Elf's song and just look through the comments real quick and you'll find what one woman said. She said every time she watches this movie, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, she can't help but burst into tears, especially when she hears Hermie's song because that's how she feels every day of her life. She feels like a misfit. How about you? Do you feel like you just don't fit in anywhere? Do you feel like the expectations that life is put burdening you with does not fit up with your capabilities or your interests? Do you feel like the world and people in your life are constantly demanding that you be someone that you're not? Do you feel like a misfit? Because there are expectations that are laid upon us, no matter what your station in life. Now, some of those expectations are for your benefit, aren't they? What your parents, your teachers, or the police <laughs> expect of you, if you follow those expectations, you will benefit. You will stay safe, you will learn, you will grow up to be a contributing member of society. But not all expectations that are laid upon you are good. For instance, women are expected to be docile, to be concerned about their appearance, and to be quiet. Men are expected to be emotionless, to keep it all together, to be go-getters, and, in some cases, not even to show affection for those they care about. Children are expected to be obedient, never to ask questions, never to doubt those in authority, even if their questions are meant uh, out of curiosity and a desire to learn. And how do you feel when you fail to meet the expectations that are laid upon you? You don't feel real. If a woman pipes up in a board meeting and says, you know, I see the direction we're on, and I don't think it's good, I think we should go in this direction, she is treated as not a real woman. If a man cries, is unsure of himself, is passive, he is treated as not a real man. If a child asks too many questions, doubts authority too much, even out of curiosity and a desire to learn, that child is treated as defective like a G.I. Joe coming off the manufacturing line with the wrong set of paint. Almost there, just not quite the real thing. It doesn't feel great, does it? To not be able to live up to the expectations others are burdening you with. So you got a couple options. You can either put in the effort, improve yourself, Become the person everyone is asking you to be. Fall in line. Fit the mold. But the whole time, won't you feel hollow? Because you're not being who you are. 
You're trying to be someone else's definition of who you should be. So there's the other option. You could dig your heels even harder. You could embark on a journey of self-discovery and self-expression. You could treat the highest good in your life as expressing yourself, being yourself. But you will be digging yourself into a deeper and deeper hole of self-isolation and vanity as you pay attention only to how you can express yourself. Or the third option, you could come and take your place in the body of Christ. You could take your seat at the family table of God himself. Because nobody's expectations for you matter more than your Savior, Jesus. Because Jesus is not the editor of a magazine that puts a picture of the best kind of Christian, of a perfect Christian on the cover, and says to you, you be like that. Jesus is not the CEO of a company whose attention you can get only if you really do something that's out of this world and crazy. Will he stop by and say, good job. Jesus is not your dad. Jesus is not your buddy. Jesus is your savior. He's the one who loved you before you could meet a single one of God's expectations. Jesus is the one who bled on a cross to make you part of himself. And by his glorious resurrection, to guarantee that neither life nor death Neither Satan nor sin can separate you from the love of God that is in his name. And it is into his name that you were baptized, that you were clothed with a new self, that you were made new. You see, there are no misfits in the body of Christ. This morning I stand in front of a group of people who are all exactly the same. You are all a bunch of sinners. You are all dearly loved and saved by the blood of Jesus, completely forgiven and on your way to heaven. There are no misfits in the body of Christ. Now, some of you were born into the Lutheran church, and that is such a blessing. To be able to say that you, from infancy onward, have heard the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation. But some of you came to believe in Jesus later in life, and that is just as much of a blessing. But when you did, did you go through some classes with a pastor? This morning, I'm looking at some people with whom I sat down and went through those classes. And that was such a good time. I always enjoy it, mostly because I get to listen to myself talk, but also I get to enjoy time getting to know you guys. But at the time, whether it was called membership classes or Bible information classes, we here at Trinity call them Bible basics classes. We sincerely hope and pray that you got the point of what those classes are. We sincerely hope and pray that you know what they are not. No, we sit down for classes with a Bible open, and it's not a vetting process where we see if you are up to snuff to join Trinity Lutheran Church. It's not a job interview, nor is it just a hoop that you jump through, just going through the motions to become an official member of Trinity. No, we want you to join the body of Christ, not the body of Mike Cherney, not even the body of Trinity Lutheran Church as our tradition and church culture stand. We want you to know how much we truly have in common in Jesus, that we are all a bunch of sinners saved by grace, a bunch of children dearly loved by God himself and bought with the blood of Christ. We want you to know that you are all the same, but Paul wants you to know you are all completely different. Some of you are eyes, some of you are feet, 
Some of you are hands. But you all have your place in the body of Christ. That you have your unique set of gifts your unique personality, your unique background, do you think that's an accident? It is God who created you, and it is Christ who redeemed you. You are here because God has placed you in the body, and He's got very important things for you to do. So you are gifted in different ways. Some of you, your gift is to volunteer your time in an official capacity here at Trinity, and we're very thankful that you do. Some of you vote on matters that matter to you in the voters' assembly. You pipe up when you have feedback to give. Some of you share Jesus in your life, whether that's with total strangers or with your own family or with your friends. And some of you do something completely different from those examples, but that doesn't mean that you're not gifted. None of you is here by accident. None of you can say, I'm not part of the body, because you absolutely are. And each and every one of you, as unique as you are, as specifically as you are gifted, serve a function in the body of Christ that only you can. So if someone else is serving their church or living their Christian life in a way that is clearly visible. You see them out at every event. They're always volunteering. They're always doing a bunch of stuff. That's great for them. But don't feel like because you're not them that you don't belong. And the reverse is true. If you are at every event, you're always volunteering, you're always giving your time to Trinity, you're always doing all these things, and you see someone whose gifts don't really allow them to do that, you are not more a part of the body than they are. Because each of you brings something to the table that only you can. And God designed you that way. Did you hear Paul say it? It is God who has placed the parts of the body together. God who has brought us together as one body in Christ. So you can be assured of your place here at Trinity. You are all exactly the same. You are all completely different as members of the body of Christ. Your body needs you. We need you. We need your prayers. We need your attendance. We need you to show up. We need your feedback. We need your time. We need your work. Because we are a body of Christ, here to do Christ's work, here to do things God has prepared for us in advance to do, to serve each other and our neighbor, to spread this message that we are all the same, sinners bought by the blood of Christ, but that we are all uniquely gifted. There are no misfits in the body of Christ. There are no misfits in Trinity Lutheran Church. There's no faulty G.I. Joes. There's no lack of expectations. You are all a crucial member of this body, and your body needs you. Amen.